Hello and welcome to Patrick's Models and Transports. So, we're going to have a look at some motors. Three different motors, two are from my spares and one is from the future real car projects. So we're actually going to be cleaning this one. This is a Jouef, by the look of, there's no markings on that chassis, but it definitely looks Jouef to me. A Jouef three pole motor which is very much a standard electric motor of the time, somewhat similar in its construction to a British motor, a Hornby motor. The brushes are held in here. These are the brush holders. You can open these with uh, a screwdriver. And uh, it's a three-pole motor. One, two, and three. Uh, this here seems to be a bit more of a problematic motor to open. Let's see if we've got enough light. Because, I see, ah, that might be better. I think that's better. Okay. Right. I think you can see better now. Can you? Yes, you can. Okay. So, I'm not planning to dismantle this motor because I would have to take these out and you can have access to the brushes here and ah, we could even have a look and see if we can actually take the brushes out and clean the commutator because in this case here we can't take it out, we can't take the rotor out, you see that's a problem, but we should be able to have access through the, uh, through the brush holders. Let's see what happens. So this is one. This is a Jouef five pole motor, which I got with various spares. This works well. In fact, we can see, compare the noise. So this is our, this is our three pole motor, the one from the, the locomotive chassis that's going to become a real car. Very noisy, very rattly, it needs lubrication, it needs cleaning, it needs everything, so this is a noisy one. This is a five pole motor, we can hear there's much quieter. Now we're running, we're not on a controller, so I'm at nine volts power. Much quieter motor. This also needs uh, needs um, some maintenance to it, no doubt. Um, this is easier to dismantle because I suppose that by taking the brush holders out, at that point I should be able to pull this, this plastic bearing out completely. I've never opened a Jouef motor because the Jouef motors I have work very well and this type of commutator does tend to get less dirty compared to, for example, a Ringfield motor. You can even just Put put some some uh, some contact spray in here, and that'll clean it out. The only problem is that you can't go in with a toothpick and clean the segments of the commutator because generally you get dirt deposits from the carbon brushes in there, and it's very important to clean them out. Then the third motor we're having a look at this evening is the famous Jouef saucisson or sausage motor. This is a spare one I've got. This is fitted to, in my case, to the two, uh, SNCF uh, 231 C60 um, 462 locomotive. That is really a great, a, a fantastic locomotive to drive. And you can see that this loco has got a lot of, it's nearly as if it has a flywheel. In fact, the, lo the motor, the locomotive, you can push it along and the wheels turn, that's incredible. And let's just have a look at this. So we'll connect our 9 volt battery to this one. We'll just peg it on here. Okay, and now we'll just go with the other contact. And we're going to be we're doing 9 volt bursts, of course, but very quiet. And I take it off and it just continues running. So very realistic, it's really a great motor. The only limitation this motor has is its size, so that's why eventually Jouef, when moving from toy locomotives 
to model locomotives, so from toy trains to model trains, it scaled down its motors. Also, I read on a website, it was beginning, the tooling for making these motors was beginning to wear out, and so they were forced to do it. Uh, these motors, the saucisson motor or sausage motor, came in 6 volt, in origin in 6 volt format, and then in 12 volt. The nickname saucisson or sausage came from its, its shape, and also because in, in, at the beginning it was wrapped in brown paper, uh, brown insulating paper, which was like the paper that you, you wrap a salami in, you know, a sausage, the butchers. And so that's why it was nicknamed saucisson, sausage. And uh, it's a very, very good motor. It's absolutely a good motor. And I'm very pleased to have a spare. Some, a spare. I was a box of assortment. I bought some, some wagons, some old Jouet, modified Jouet wagons. We've talked about them on the channel. And uh, I'll actually dedicate a whole video to those because they were modified by the very first owner, transformed from toy wagons into, into proper model wagons. And they're an absolutely fantastic job this man did. He was the grandfather of the lady in Paris that I bought all this material, all this stuff off uh, through Vinted and I'm very very pleased to have bought it because to have such a the work of a real artisan is uh, a real craftsman. It's a way of you know continuing even if he's not with us anymore it's a way of making him live on and then say that that's so I have a lot of respect for any changes and uh, improvements that have been done on uh, on any of the models that I've managed to buy second hand. So I got this motor and this one in the stock along in the stock of, of spare parts. So we're going to move these out of the road. Of course, all these magnets are not good near a computer. So they're full of computer things around here. Let's uh, put them over here. Okay, far away from the house. Okay, so we're going to have a look at this. Let's see if I have a screwdriver that will cooperate. And every evening there's a different angle. The thing is I've got the computer on over there and I don't want to switch it off and move things because I've got to do a thing later. So let's see if we can get these brushes out of here with this screwdriver. Let's see what happens. Oh, here it goes. Perfect screwdriver. I bought this years and years and years ago. I think it must have been 1996, 95, I don't remember. It's actually made in France. <laughs> so, French screwdriver on a French motor. So, let's see what happens here. It's a perfect screwdriver. Fits the screw very well. Let's see what goes on. I'm going to add a pair of, of close-up glasses to see what I'm doing. Not to do anything daft. A pair of pliers can be handy on this occasion. Uh, I've never opened one of these, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Whether to expect springs that jump out across the room. No. That was very simple. Brush holding screw. And some hair and fluff. So it's a very good thing that I'm opening this because apparently everything is very filthy. Oh, we should do an intelligent thing because there's a left and a right in this case here. So we'll just get our... We'll just use a pencil and we'll mark this. Oh, I can't really read that. But we're marking that one and one. So here's a brush. There's still plenty of brush in there, oh, there's plenty of brush, there's a lot of brush here, huh? no, no problem. And uh, let's see what this dirt is, where's the tweezers? Tweezers, and let's see what this mank is. Bits of plastic from the, from the brush holder that have been caught up in the thread. Uh, let's see here. What's this dirt? Oof. Let's get rid of this rubbish. Okay. So that's that. 
mark this with a one as well. So the one there, so we know what we're doing. And here we see the commutator inside. And the commutator is needing a clean. We'll go in there with some. I've actually got some contact spray. This is from the bottom of the tin. The spray can was finished. I have to buy a new spray can. Um, but what was left? A uh, you know, tin opener. Swiss knife tin opener. And broke into the tin and poured it into this plastic jar. So there's no point in throwing away good material, is there? It's like when you've got your toothpaste. You can throw away the tube. You cut it open. And scoop it all out. Oh my, I'm Scottish, am I? <laughs> uh, okay, all right then. Let's see. I think that we should put these here, these things to clean, in in some lighter fluid. That's what we're going to put them in. Lighter fluid, lighter fluid. Let's put the lighter fluid in here. I have to go and buy lighter fluid. I'm a bit short. I'm a bit short in lighter fluid. Okay, hold on. Here's the thing for levering this here open. We're very short on lighter fluid. Not good. I have to buy it. I have to remember to buy it tomorrow. And we'll get the lighter fluid. I mean, I went to the tobaccoist for <laughs> something else the other day. Okay, something you use a lighter for. No, not cigarettes. <laughs> I don't smoke them. And uh, bad habits, not a good idea. Let's put that in there. And we'll put this in here as well to give it a clean. And a holder. Okay, that can stay in there. Then we'll use that lighter fluid to continue cleaning things up. Let's open the other one. I hope you can see what I'm doing and not just seeing the back of my hand because I think that might be a bit boring. Okay, let's open this one. It's a perfect screwdriver. Okay. That's coming out nicely. Screwdriver away, we don't need that. And let's take this out. It's a pretty sharp screw. Okay, that's coming along nicely. Let me come. There's the brush. This is a contact and the brush and the brush holder. It's pretty dirty this brush holder. Brushes are a bit dirty as well. Stick them in the in the lighter fluid to clean. And now we're gonna have a look at the commutator. Now it's all running freely. Now that everything's running freely without the brushes, we'll remove here. There's a whole lot of mank in there seems to be old no it's just a plastic it's just a plastic cover that go on top of the the motor shaft i thought it would be it looked, looked more like dirt when i was looking at it yesterday but i don't see anything now that i see it in a strong light with two pairs of, of glasses on I can actually see that it's mainly all gunked up. Lubric lubricant has been... Wah, my, my, this, this is disgusting. Let's use a, a toothpick. We wet a toothpick in some lighter fluid. And we'll go there. It's very important when we're doing these kind of jobs not to go and damage the winding. So always use, when scraping a commutator or going close to the winding, I advise using a toothpick because using a metal item could really cause damage it just needs to slip and then and then that's that 
and then the motor is Eukert, to use a Scottish term for for uh, broken, no use. So we're melting this dirty grease using some lighter fluid, which I'm taking out of this small vessel just to clean things. Another very useful thing I use, and these you can pick these up. You go to a, a soap shop or a place that sells perfumes. These are the testers for perfumes. My wife, she likes perfumes, so she goes and does them. She she you know, sprays perfumes and things and deodorants and all these things here. And, and I pick up handfuls of them and stick them in my pocket <laughs> because I use them for doing for doing things with locomotives. Maintenance, these are great. These are absolutely great because you can they absorb, they're very the the they absorb very well and they're quite rigid. And you can even they last a long time because then you cut the dirty bit off, you don't need to throw it in the bin. Being thrifty again tonight. Well, why waste resources? That's what I see. In the end, we pay them. So why should we why should we throw things away? Yeah. Let's just snip that off and go and clean. I can even dab this into some lighter fluid. That'll see how it absorbs very well. It's very good at absorbing. So we can go in there with this wet bit of cardboard. And in this case here, this is actually better than a cotton bud because it doesn't lose fluff. I wouldn't want any fluff. And strands from a cotton bud in in the in the motor, that wouldn't be a good idea. You can clean that well, you see, and that's very that's very very well done. That's okay. I'd say that's acceptable. Now we have to see about the state of the commutator, and when I'm looking at it now with a strong light, it doesn't seem to be too bad. But I'm going to have to go in there and clean it with something. So it might very well, well be the cotton bud. Does the cotton bud fit in there? No, it's too thick. Oh, what are we going to use here? Let's think. Let's use, ah, first of all, we can go in with a clean toothpick and go and clean the segments between the commutator segments in there. But I think I'm going to put a spot of, I'm going to pour a spot of contact cleaner in there which will actually do the job contact cleaner is just alcohol it smells of alcohol so we'll put it in this spot you don't really need to put too much so we'll just pop it in here and I'll go in there and clean turn that around I have to buy a tennis contact contact cleaner. Went to a big tool store not long ago and I asked, Do you have contact cleaner? And they said, No, we don't keep it. I said, But the other big tool store, this was a Brico. And the, the other one, I said, But they have it in La Roi Merling, which belongs to the same chain. And they said, Oh, no, but we don't keep it. So for goodness sake, why do you not keep contact cleaner? Anyway, they, apparently they don't clean it. So, either I pop around to the local hardware store here, or or I don't buy, or I just order it on Amazon. <laughs> I'll be quicker. Come straight to the house. I don't bother. I think Amazon and all this online buying is a very, 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 very good solution. Oh, I'm not too keen on going in here with this, but in fact, I'm pulling some of the cotton off, and I'm just keeping it as narrow as possible. Let's just snip off using a pair of scissors. Okay, that should be a bit better. Let's do another thing. We'll just use a lighter to burn off any strands. Let's try and not set fire to the place. Oops. Oh, that's a nice smell. My wife will be making comments when she comes along in here next time. Okay. That wasn't a good, ah, okay. That was a good idea because I'm getting rid of the cotton wool completely. 
I just need one exactly what I need and we'll go in there and there's less risk of and the light up and we'll go in here we can wet it with a spot of contact cleaner spill what's left in here and we'll go in there like that and just turn the commutator round and see how dirty this is oh hey how dirty it is extremely oh really very very dirty okay that's nice and clean i think we've cleaned the commutator now in fact it's glistening nice and clean now so we'll go here i'm just rubbing this wet cardboard stick with a spot of cotton wool on it the cotton wool so wet that it's not going to come out okay i'm checking for strands of cotton wool in there but i don't see any i'm going in with a toothpick to clean the sort of feeling the cot the segments i want to clean the segments doesn't seem to be any dirt let's find the next segment here it is let's go in there clean that okay the third segment there it is we just take the toothpick which is relatively clean okay perfect that's done so now we'll let this here dry with a piece of tissue paper Anyway, this is alcohol, this will evaporate in a minute. We'll even leave it on top of the radiator and evaporate pretty fast. It smells of alcohol. Okay, right. In fact, considering this is alcohol and it evaporates, better put the stuff away before it evaporates all over the room. There's still plenty of, plenty of, of contact cleaner in there. Okay, clean that. And now we'll have a look at, we'll have a quick look at the brush holders, the brushes and the, that in the bin, that, of course the brushes release dirt, so it's normal that brush, brushes, brushes release, release uh, dust, sorry, not dirt, and a clean commutator is better. Um, what I'm going to do on some of my other these kind of these kind of, of uh, motors tend to accumulate less dirt compared to others the ring fueled ones at least in my experience and uh, generally if they work you can you notice a motor that has a dirty commutator but put some contact spray and just go in and uh, and that gives them a good clean in fact uh, the youtuber oo bill uh, he's he's from perth in scotland and uh, very interesting, very interesting YouTuber. He uses a lot of contact, a contact cleaner. In fact, he uses more contact cleaner than me. I, he uses it for wheels and things. I generally prefer to use um, lighter fluid for cleaning things, but I keep the contact cleaner for, in particular for these kind of motors here. And uh, where it's a lot of work, you know, taking things out and putting them, and taking them back together. But I think this has done a good job by the look of it. The good thing instead of petrol, of uh, lighter fluid, is that that dries very, very quickly, faster than contact cleaner, because the, the petrol of petrol it evaporates very quickly. In fact, even here as we're speaking, these are these things that I'm cleaning are evaporating. So let's have a look here and get rid of some dirt. We'll just use a, a cotton bud here to clean things they're absolutely spotless no problem that's one second one yeah, we should chuck that in there as well this is nice and clean second 
your shoulder. That's good. Let's fish out the brushes. Doing the brushes do it, dry them up. Yes, that's it. That's fine. No residue there. The brush is nice and clean. Okay. The other brush is in here. There are many, many different ways of cleaning. Everybody uses different. There's people who use the ultrasonic bath for cleaning parts in, which is also used for cleaning jewelry. And uh, it's a very valid way of, of working. There's lots, and uh, you can find all sorts of good ideas looking on, on, on the internet. And that's the grey thing. Okay, that's clean. Polish this up. It just needs a bit of, of lighter fluid here. I don't need to polish it using the, the fiberglass brush, fiberglass pencil. A fiberglass pencil is a great tool. Very good for contacts and for really dirty parts or traces of rust and things. The problem is that it's best to always use a pair of gloves. Because in September, when I began the channel, must have been September, or beginning of October, I don't remember, the one of the first videos I did, I was cleaning the Jouef luggage van. And I, and I used the fiberglass pencil to clean some contacts. And I think I just finished saying, just be careful because you can get little, to, you know, you risk getting strands of, of fiberglass stuck in your fingers and things, and better use a pair of gloves and a hat, or, or be, be careful anyway. And after that, when I was finishing the video, I absentmindedly rubbed my hand on the mat and got a bit of a tiny little bit of fiberglass in my finger, in my, my, uh, here on the left hand. And eventually it came out. It was pretty annoying for some time. I used a special kind of cream, the ointment that for extracting scalps and things. It, and it smells of it smells of, of creoles. So how can it really smell? Black stuff. Put it on your finger and then. And then put a bandage over it overnight, and eventually it did come out. Eventually it came out. It came out, but it took some time to come out. It was so when using the fiberglass pencil, always make sure to have a wee pot vacuum, vacuum things up, clean them, put an old bit of scrap paper, and use a pair of gloves. It's a be a better a better. It's better than having a a strand of fiberglass in your finger for 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 over a month. That wasn't very comfortable. Okay, right, that's clean. So we'll be using the fiberglass pencil, in fact, to do some cleaning jobs and contacts, so that'll be, that'll be required. I see the state of this. The commutator seems to be okay. We're going to do a thing. We'll just fold this in two. Wedge this in here. We'll just fold that. And make a little kind of scraper. Let's see if I can manage to make something. These tester, perfume tester papers are a great thing. Cut a bit off there. Okay. And we'll just go in here with this and please put it on the commutator and just turn the commutator around. And that will do a final cleaning of the commutator. It's come nice and clean by the look of it. It's okay. Much better than what it was. Ah, this is, we're already half an hour. Ah, these are... I'm not going to do lots of these videos because honestly, it's, it might be a bit on the boring side. Okay, let's see if we can dry things up with all this contact cleaner. There's too much of it. Very persistent stuff. Okay, it seems to be all right. Very well. I think we're going to pop the brush holders back in position. And let's see where the worn part is. Here's the worn bit. That's the... Trying to see what I'm doing. 
this is the part that goes on the commutator this is the the worn down parts we just put them in as they were as one I'm checking that I'm in camera oh come on get in I'm trying to be, do it very politely using using tools and not my fingers but it doesn't seem to want to collaborate this okay that's in that's one in The spring inside here that keeps them keeps them in position. The spring is in is fitted is caught inside this inside the spring loaded brush holders very good system no springs shooting all over the place unlike when you open a lima motor you have to be very careful a ringfield motor that's a lima one that this <laughs> the the springs don't shoot across the room and then you never see them again and that's it that's you <laughs> no game over now let me see which is side number one. One of these is marked one. One of them is marked one. Who did I mark one? And I cleaned the one. So it's gonna it doesn't really matter. The motor is the same. So we can just pop pop them on. The important thing is that these hooks go in ways. So we just put that in. Let's make sure that there's no strands of plastic are not getting in the road and we want to make sure that the the brush doesn't propel jet propel itself into into oblivion on the other side of the table desk and god knows where it'll end up okay then you go there we go that's that we catch it in screw it in gently by hand at the beginning and Let's just catch a screwdriver and we'll go in there and screw that in position. That's one. Brass against plastic, so we don't want to over tighten, we don't want to damage the thread. okay that's good that's good that's good to go let's just give it a final just a bit just a spot just okay perfect you never want to exaggerate let's get its mate at the other side pop that in position like that i'm trying not to cover things with my fingers and i'm also checking that not running out of okay that's you in just twist it in by hand just as we go okay now we just get the screwdriver and tighten the brush holder that should be good uh, what i should have done but i could have done it with a button it's the same We'll do it now. First of all, we'll see if this is working. That's the main thing. And then we'll then we'll lubricate things. Okay. Okay, done. Move that out the road. Let's get the nine, connect up the nine volt battery and see what happens. Things should be going well. 
Oh, I don't see that. Oh, point contact. Not too noisy. Much smoother. That's good. Okay, now disconnected. Maybe we tighten this a spot just to make sure everything's good. As tight as the other one. Not that tight, but not too tight. Hold it in position with your other your middle finger, and that's it. And Bob's your uncle, that's that in position. Okay. Right, -o. let's give it another check just for luck. Very good. Right, now, now that that's been reassembled, we'll go and lubricate the motor bearing. And for to lubricate the motor bearing, wait a minute, let's throw some rubbish out of the roads, because there's too much junk here. It might even be. That in the bin. That one's clean. This one. Mm. Might do for something else. Okay, that's been get put away for next time. That's more rubbish. Okay, that is also rubbish. I better have a tidy work, tidy workplace. Okay, screwdriver is not needed. Put it away in the drawer. Scissors are not needed. Put them away in the drawer. It's always good to have a nice tidy. No mess lying around. Oh, there's some petrol left in there. We'll use that for cleaning something else. Okay, right. Now we're going to lubricate this. How do I? What do I use to lubricate motor bearings? I use a mix of sewing machine oil and technical petroleum jelly. So technical petroleum jelly is my favourite grease for locomotives, and I'm going to show you the tube. Which is here. This is a tube. Of course, this is an Italian product. Grasso di Vaselina Tecnica. So, technical Vaseline grease. Petroleum jelly grease. And uh, it's a very, very good product because it also, it also guarantees it's, it conducts electricity. So, this is good. Very good on gears. It doesn't damage plastic gears. It's good, it's good on plastic gears, it's good on, on brass gears, it doesn't gunk up, it doesn't dry up. I've been running locomotives for, for months and I've not had to, I've not had to, you know, re-lubricate the gears. On maybe very, on the O3OT boiler, I had to add a spot of grease and oil on the motor bearings because it's a very worn out motor and it wants more lubrication, but... Honestly, it's a really good product. So I use a mix of sewing machine oil and technical petroleum jelly uh, for the motor bearings. And why do I use? You could even just use. You could even just use uh, sewing machine oil. The problem is that you don't want sewing machine oil, oil lubricant oil, going anywhere close to the brushes. You don't want it to sort of seep into the brushes, because if it seeps into the brushes. Then you'll have a spectacular motor failure, burnout, woof, cloud of smoke, throw the motor in the bin. So it's, a, and the technical petroleum jelly mixed with oil makes it sufficiently dense to uh, stay exactly where you want it. And I always pop it in using this chemistry laboratory tool that I inherited from my grandfather, who was a chemistry teacher. I keep saying that. I'm becoming repetitive. I'm becoming an old man. <laughs> okay, and uh, we just go in here, take a spot. I'm gonna have to make some new stuff. Like, uh, I think I'm also short on. I'm also short on uh, on on lubricant oil, sewing machine oil. I'll have to buy some. I'm just gonna stir this a bit with this toothpick. Okay, that is that's the wet bit. It's a mix. Number two. There. Okay. So what I do, I go in here with this needle, 
can see it's a bit black because I use this even when I'm I use this when I'm doing when I'm making model kits. And I made a model kit last year. I'll, I'll do a video dedicated to model kits very soon because I'm planning to make one. And uh, I had to punch a whole lot of holes in a chassis that had, that the, that had been forgotten. <laughs> and and I just I just heated this on a candle and it went in and did the job. So that was a very good, this is a multi-function tool, which I also use to get into these very narrow, narrow places. I just put a very small drop and I go in, trying to, there, for example, I'm keeping this pulled out and I want to get this drop of lubricant right in there. I don't want to go close to the, close to the rotor. I want to go right in there and that will go and sit in there and stay put and there won't be any more noise from here and now I want to do the same thing to the front bearing which is here so what I'm going to do I'll just go in wet my needle there it is let's see maybe I have to definitely have to mix I sort of go in a sort of 50 50 ratio Half oil, half technical Vaseline, and that way you get a good lubricant. There we go. That's a that's a good bit. Oh, don't you go anywhere. I want you for the business. So I'm just going to go in there. And that's even quite a big drop, huh? So the best thing to do is to pull, pull the just keep that pull pushed out like that. And wet the. See if you can see what I'm doing. I hope you can. I want to wet the motor bearing right there. Put my drop of of lubricant there, and then just put it in like that. And there's no way it's going to go close to the bearings because there's a close to the to the brushes because it's just held in position right there where it has to go. And then afterwards, I'll take. Oh, one of the this here spot to remove the excess some of this tester paper and just make sure there's nothing that can come in contact with I don't want anything to come in contact with the with the, the commutator so any excess I can absorb it with this perfume tester paper so now our motor should be very smooth running. Let's test it. We'll give it a proper test. We'll connect one. Connect this. And then we'll go over here. Ah, it's not working simply because let's just simplify our life. I was testing other motors. If I test this one here, I can test it directly with the battery. <laughs> no point. Here we go. Much quieter. Even if I lean over. No screeching. No howling. Let's invert polarities. That's a much quieter motor. Much quieter. It was really noisy. It was real, really, really noisy. There we go. So that's the first step of the and it smells of a nice clean motor. It doesn't make that particular smell of dirty commutator. You, you, you probably you can imagine. That's absolutely perfect. You can imagine it's also turning at a lower speed. Now we're at nine volts. Nine volts is pretty fast. But generally, the locomotive will be running at 5 volts to have a realistic speed. We're not going at 9 volts. 9 volts is already quite high up on the, on the scale of the controller. Okay, so that's that finished. So we've serviced the motor. That's step one towards one of the future projects, which is the, the rail car. And that was a nice clean job. I had never opened one of these motors, so it was the first time I do it. I was impressed by the fact that the 
the brush springs are fixed into the brush holder and they don't shoot all over the place. That was nice. That was a nice, nice touch. Thank you, whoever designed this motor. And uh, that's very good. I wonder if they have them even on this one. Mm, we're going to have to open this five pole here to have a look. To have a look. I've got plans for this five pole motor. Because one of the Jouef 030T locomotives, the red one, the one you saw in the video with the, with the three with the three small tank engines, the three boyers, the red one has a three pole motor. That locomotive was developed and marketed with a five pole motor as standard. But the red one, the one that was red and gold, which was a sort of novelty locomotive, sort of special edition, and why on earth they made it, I'd like to know. Knowing that probably less people would have bought it, they plonked a three-pole motor in it, and that's why it's so noisy. It's a really noisy three-pole motor. And uh, I have to have a look to see if I can swap them around. I would like to put this five-pole inside it, because it would make it much, much, much quieter and smoother and uh, give it a better performance. So I'm going to have a look at that one day, and uh, we might... I need to get a gear puller, that's the thing, to be able to change the, to transfer the worm drive from that, that, from th that motor to this one. I have to also check that the drive shaft is long enough and all the rest of it, but what else is, we'll just get a spare, as a spare and we'll have a noisy locomotive, that's not a problem. Okay, very well, so thank you for your uh, kind attention, I might even finish the video for a change by showing up in video because I don't often show up in video. You've seen me maybe, there you go, that's me. I'm the man, I'm Patrick of Patrick's Models. Uh, maybe you saw me in the one when I was driving the regatta. And uh, thank you for your attention and uh, for your likes and your comments in particular because I really enjoy reading your comments. And uh, if you like the, you, the usual, here's the usual story. If you like the video, you can give us a like subscribe to the channel and also click the notification bell and that's that's that for that's that for tonight uh, i might film another video later i'm sort of trying to film videos in advance so that i can load things uh, i might i don't know if we'll load, we'll probably load this one here seeing it's connected to last night's video and uh, anyway have a very nice evening pleasant evening or whatever and uh, cheerio and see you next time Ciao, ciao. Now I'm going to have to turn the phone around to be able to switch it off. So we're going to zoom on our motor. Cheerio. And we'll give it a wee zoom. Let's give it a wee zoom. Let's give it a wee zoom. Let's give it a wee zoom. Ah, that's a zooming around the, zooming around the, the mat. Anyway. Okay, there you go, right. Cheerio, and see you next time. There you go, that's a nice clean motor. Step one, 48 minutes. Jeez, oh. Who's going to watch this man driveling for 48 minutes on a motor? Ciao.